Hi, hope you guys are doing well. It's time for our episode 8 Q&A. Let's jump right into it. Papiak asks, is there a bit of admiration going on between Aemond and Daemon? Yeah, 100%. There's definitely admiration there between the two. Aemon is definitely a fan of Daemon Targaryen. And I think, and George, by the way, mentioned this on our podcast. I think that there's some similarities to Jaime Lannister and the Blackfish. The Blackfish was Jaime's hero. And the same thing can be said for Aemon and Daemon here. I'm sure Aemon grew up on stories about the War for the Stepstones, about the Rogue Prince, and House of the Dragon was pretty upfront about it. When Otto Hightower was calling him Rogue, I think this was intentional. What that Rogue did for us when he claimed Vega, when he said that, I think this was very much intentional. And I think the same thing goes for Daemon. Aemon is kind of the son he never had, and I mean it's pretty obvious that they're similar. George even went as far as moving the D from Daemon from the front to the back. It's not like every single thing about them is similar, and I think House of the Dragon is doing a great job so far with Aemon. They're going into a very interesting direction, but I got a similar question and I'll get more into it once we reach that question. Cherokat asks, I know you don't pick sides, but if you're forced, would you pick the greens or the blacks? Okay, if I really have to, I'm gonna go blacks. I definitely won't, however. I like characters from both sides. I love Rhaenys, I love Aemon, I like Daemon, I like Alicent Hightower. It's just a back and forth. I think they're very interesting. A lot of them are very bad human beings. And that is what makes this show so interesting. You can always have discussion. I said it before, but without spoiling things, Aemon is obviously going to do some horrible shit in this show. And I personally love him for it. That makes him the character that he is. And I think this whole discourse would be way better if people don't justify these horrible acts of our characters and just embrace it, which in turn, you know, just makes for better discussion. And I hope House of the Dragon will do a good job when it comes to balancing both teams. And so far, of course, the greens are portrayed more as the villains in the show, although both Rhaenyra and Alicent are kind of whitewashed. It's a weird balance, but yeah, we'll see where it goes. Philip asks, what books in the A Song of Ice and Fire universe would you most want George to write? Besides the main book series, Duncan Egg and Fire and Blood Part 2. That's a great question and I should probably do a whole video about that topic. But at the top of my head, I'm a sucker for world building, so everything that has to do with lands that we're not really all too familiar with, I would love more on that. Sephorios, DT, finally some proper Ashai, I would love that. And with House Targaryen getting so much spotlight, I'd love to get more on the other great houses. House Lannister, for example, that would be a great one. Something about the Tarbeck Rain Revolt, something about young Tywin Lannister would be great. With George R. R. Martin, there's always something to unpack. I mean, just look at the Dance of the Dragons. We have, what, 300 pages in Fire and Blood, and they are doing a whole series about this. The historic events in this whole universe are always filled with so much detail, whether it be like 200 years ago, 10 years ago, there's always something to unpack. Which is my main argument for a Duncan Egg show. We might not have these novellas finished, but we know the historic events, we know what is happening in Westeros, the Great Spring Sickness, for example. You could really explore that, but, but not today. I'm not gonna go into it today. I already made a video about Duncan Egg and a potential show, so if you're interested, definitely go check it out. Sonaris asks, do you believe that Aemon will be a straight up villain in the show or will he have some redeeming qualities? It depends. It really depends. Was what we got to see with young Aemon his villain origin story or was it to give this character some nuance, some layers? I'm really curious to find out. I think given that Aegon already is a very bad character in terms of his acts, he is a rapist. It would be wise to keep Aemon pretty grey. We know he's going to do some pretty horrible stuff. So I hope we really get something that shows him from another perspective. If you look at his character, quite tragic. He never really truly got to know the happy Viserys, the caring Viserys as much as Rhaenyra did, for example. So I hope this opens up the possibility for them to explore his emotions. I really don't want to have a typical villain if you want that, we already had that, and it's quite funny. That guy was Euron Greyjoy. I don't want another situation like this. I think right now we're already ahead, at least we got the eye patch, but I really mean from like a character perspective. I don't want to have 
a basic typical villain i would love to have someone that is a true counterpart to damon to the blacks i hope the dynamic between both characters is going to be quite respectful i hope they really respect each other and later on there's also the possibility to do something with alice rivers they could pretty much do what they didn't do with damon and lena show a more relaxed a more laid back aimant i hope they do something with it but time will tell Baziar's strategy asks, are Damon and Rhaenyra's kids bastards in House of the Dragon? No, they're definitely not bastards. I know we're getting at, of course, with Lenor being alive in the show and them actually consummating the marriage. It's not the usual, but it's Targaryen, it's Valyrian tradition. Aegon got away with it, so that would be my argument here as well. Don't ask the faith, they probably won't like it, but apart from that, I don't think it's even gonna play a role here and apart from Rhaenys and Corlys I don't think anyone will ever find out. THB Nam and MGM ask where do you think the Song of Ice and Fire plotline is gonna lead into? Do you think they will keep the ending from D&D canon or do you think they're gonna retcon it? It is of course limited in that we already know that the White Walkers won't come. I just think it's gonna be used as a character motive and I hope they are careful with it. I hope they don't take away from what I mentioned earlier from these characters being assholes. Apart from that however I think this might be a information that is lost during the dance which in turn would make it quite tragic would add even more tragedy to that whole thing. I would like that actually. In terms of retcon or canon, I think they were pretty clear about it in that they have their own canon. And when it comes to retcon, it's just way more than who gets to kill the Night King. And so far we don't even have a Night King in A Song of Ice and Fire. And I wouldn't be surprised if we would never get one. For Game of Thrones it made sense. That way you could have a face, that way you could have a villain, a big baddie. And as we all know, later seasons it was all about good against evil in a book you can just do way more with it i like the mystique that surrounds the others i like the shadows lurking and i don't need a night king but to get back to your question while i think this might cater more to george's vision i don't expect a full-on retcon and again it is its own canon so yeah jesus v asks do you think the sea snake will be mad with damon for killing his brother to a certain degree, sure, probably, but he's definitely gonna side with his wife, Rhaenys. He made his plans for the succession very clear, it was all settled, and Raymond was definitely rebelling against him here. In the source material, Raymond is of course Corlys's nephew, he's his brother in House of the Dragon, so you would definitely still be mad at him for killing your own brother, I mean, that is more than just a nephew. So it would make sense, but I think in his mind, he might actually believe that Damon killed Lenor, or that he at least was involved in that murder. So that's gonna be interesting to explore, and yeah, this might add to it. This might add to Corlys already having a corrupted relationship with Damon. We're gonna find out soon. Joshua Medeiros asks, how do you think they'll end the season? Also, I noticed the Red Keep looked a lot more bland in this episode compared to early on. I'm assuming this was House Hightower. Okay, major spoilers, so if you don't want to know anything, definitely head out now. I mean, the next episode is gonna be called The Green Council, and I believe the last one is gonna be called The Black Queen. So yeah, I expect Shipbreaker Bay, I expect Storm's End Dance, I expect Blacks and Greens fully established. I mean, in the promo thing for episode 9, we can already see that Aegon is gonna be crowned. And we have that one behind the scene photo of Rhaenyra wearing Viserys' crown. So yeah, we know what's gonna happen. How will they end it? Probably with a big montage. That's just how you get the people excited. We're gonna have the greens say something cool, we're gonna have the blacks say something cool. Or mark my word, someone is gonna look straight into the camera and it cuts right then and there. Something like this. And yeah, the high towers pretty much redesigned the entire red keep from within. It goes in line with Alicent wearing the seven pointed star now. It's all a front, it's her playing the Game of Thrones, it's her catering to the faith. So that is definitely intentional. I mean, we also had the scene of Rhaenyra and Damon talking about it, and they actually confronted Alicent about it. So it's intentional, and I like that detail. So that is all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely make sure to subscribe. Would very much appreciate that. Take care and see us later.